Okay, can I be heard? Can people hear me? Please let me know if you can hear me. Great. Can Okay, so we so we can start. Yes, people hearing me, everyone? Hello and welcome to today's live streaming session on theater practice from creation to performance. And with us today is the absolutely brilliant Yuki Elias. Hello, Yuki. Yuki joins us from Mumbai. Hi. Hi, Huri Auntie. <laughs> and uh, the Huri Auntie is because I also happen to, she, I happen to be her aunt. She happens to be her aunt. <laughs> Great. So, Yuki is a theater actor, director, and teacher. She trained at the Jacques Lecoq School of Theater in Paris and has also trained as a pedagogue from the London International School of Performing Arts. Yuki has uh, performed in many countries of the world, uh, apart from also, of course, performing all the time in her home country of India. So she's performed in countries like UK, US, Canada, um, Australia, Zimbabwe. And we've had the pleasure of having her do a small performance for us in Karachi. Yuki, would you like to tell us about that trip to Pakistan, your first and I hope not the last? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it was, uh, I have to say, it was such a special trip and a special show. And even though it was a small 40-minute uh, show, it's one of the biggest moments in my life. So, uh, you know, we uh, the idea of performing in Karachi uh, to an audience that I had never expected to perform to was such a treat. And I was doing a show called Dying to Succeed, which is a very rambunctious comedy satire using Shakespeare's characters. And just before coming on stage, my mom was with me and mom was telling me, look, this is Karachi. You know, it's time to uh, just just think about all the things you're going to do. You know, maybe you should edit this part out and maybe you should not do that funny movement and maybe cut that part out. So I got onto stage and I told the audience first thing I said, my mom's basically edited half the show out. She's saying we're in Karachi and we must <laughs> edit all my crazy stuff out. And the audience was in splits because everyone knows how moms are and how moms are very worried what their daughters or sons are going to do <laughs> on a public arena. Nikki, I also remember that it was something which was not, um, you know, which had, which was not planned beforehand. It sort of happened because you actually, your mom had come to, your mom and dad were attending the Karachi Literature yes. Festival. And mom had a how you went looking for, you know, some sort of props to do it with. That's Absolutely. Part of it too. Mum had uh, been invited officially to come and uh, be part of the Karachi Literature Fest. And uh, dad and I were very jealous that she gets to go and we don't get to go. And of course, we have so many family like all of you and we just really wanted to visit Pakistan. So we managed to get ourselves invited and uh, be part of the festival. And of course, I came and then we went running around looking for props for the show. And we managed to put it, and it was very, very thrilling. The audience was mind-blowing. We had such a good time. I still have videos of the show because it's a lot of audience interaction. And I keep going back to watch it. And you know, the, what a great time we had, audience and me performing and interacting together. It was super. You also got a lot of feedback after that. There were, there were a couple of people who are doing community theater uh, in Karachi who wanted you to visit there. Um, schools and see, you know, what they are doing. I remember that exactly. That uh, we, 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 I had a few uh, people who came up and they told me that they do a lot of uh, interactive comedy um, and that they do these workshops. I went to a school to see how they're teaching theater to children. Um, we, um, I came with you to, um, um, 
I, and and we 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 worked with a, a, a theater group, very famous Karachi yes, theater group. We worked with Shima Kermani and Tahir Kaniswa too. You did a workshop. Niswa, that's it. And we did a Comedia del Arte workshop there. And I was yeah. uh, very lucky to even go to Napa, which is uh, the the performing arts school, and to see the spaces that they have. And I met so many students there. We did a little workshop. So it was a fantastic time for, I mean, it was a great trip. And I haven't even begun to talk about the food. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a special session on that. Yes. So, you can tell me, um, I know you've had a really illustrious career in theater and you've, you know, you've done Hermia for, at the Royal um, Shakespeare, Shakespeare Company on, in Stratford-upon-Avon and, you know, you've uh, trained uh, the UK's leading opera company for their production of Mozart's uh, Magic Flute and all that. But I know that you have a theater group of your own, of a, you have a group of very talented young people working with you. Uh, what's the name of the group? Our group, uh, our theater company is called Durse Brothers, like Durse, yeah. from yeah. far, like Karachi oh, to Mumbai yeah. Brothers. Karachi <laughs> to Mumbai, Behenes and Brothers. <laughs> Yeah, so that name, how did that name come about? How did that group form? And uh, is it a lot of people? I believe you do a lot of original scripts that you've put together yes. yourself. Yes. And um, is, it a, is it mostly community theater? Are you doing community theater as well as proscenium theater? Tell us about your group. Yes, so we do all kinds of theater. At the heart of the group, we're very few people. Um, and as we all know, theater is a hard uh, economic structure and all of those things. But at the heart, we're a small group of people. I came up with the name Durse Brothers, named after if you watched horror films in the 70s by a producer in India called Ramze Brothers. So, of course, I love silly things. I love comedy. I, I, I love playfulness. So I thought a name like Durse Brothers would be fun, like a tribute to the Ramze Brothers. And um, we as a company choose to work with different performers all the time. So every show, we have a whole new group of actors, dancers, writers. We love to collaborate with new people. So we don't have one group. We're always outward looking and always trying to have mixed collaborations. And the work that we do is mixed from, of course, we began with a lot of proscenium indoor theater uh, shows. But then we decided to also make a show called Basti Me Masti, which is a community show. And we said, let's take it to neighborhoods where people would otherwise from there never be able to come to the theater to watch shows. So we'll take shows there. And for us, it's a lot of fun because it's a new audience. It's a big audience and it's a very high energy audience. So we love those. And I'll show you a photo later of a mix of shows to show you how we move from proscenium to outdoors. Etc. So I guess that's what you mean when you say you want to make theater for diverse spaces and diverse audiences. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, we'd love to travel. So as much as we get to travel with our shows, we're most excited. I'm still trying to come back with another show to Karachi. <laughs> lovely. I mean, we are, we've been we've been wanting to do that for a long time. Have you here? Yes. So Yuki Ye Batao, you have uh, you've done this wonderful, wonderful uh, one woman. Uh, theater called uh, The Elephant in the Room. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's, you had uh, shows all over India, and I believe you've taken it to Zimbabwe, and you also pr performed it at the Edinburgh French Festival. Yes. Tell us how, you know, we, I, I know that uh, in a little bit we'll be, um, you'll be doing a, some pieces from this, you know, um, performance. Just tell us briefly how this uh, act came about, how you wrote it, how the characters were written in it, and uh, what was the, what is the theme of the play? Yes. Thanks, Farooq, for messaging that Basti Masti is an awesome concept. Thank you for that. And everyone who's already on the chats and messaging us, that's nice to have some interaction. Um, Elephant in the Room is uh, one of our first original plays that we created. Um, and the story is based, it's actually a, a, a take on a very famous uh, myth in India, which is of Ganpati, the elephant god. And, you know, the classic story goes that uh, Parvati made this uh, a son out of clay and he was protecting her when she was having a shower. But Shiva came in and he said, you can't go in and Shiva in a fit of rage chopped off his head, chopped off his head and replaced it later with an elephant's head. And um, 
you know, of course, uh, I, you know, stories are stories. And I always like to think of stories from another perspective, another angle. And I kept thinking, what if Ganpati doesn't like his elephant head? What if it's too heavy for him? I mean, it's a big thing to have a new head um, and that too of an elephant. And how would he feel truly as a teenage boy about it? And how would he become this god that we know? He's the most lovable god in India. Everybody loves him, even like outside India. He's very famous. And he's this happy, cheerful, fun-loving god. So I was wondering, how did he become that from you know being receiving this head and being upset about it? So we wrote a whole new story to investigate this aspect. What if he doesn't like his head? And what if he goes to find his old head? And what happened to the elephant that got beheaded? What happened to the family of that elephant? So every story, we always want to see, you know, two sides. Ganpati always thought he was the victim because uh, his head got chopped off. And he's like trying to find my head, my head. But at no point in the story did he think about the elephant that got beheaded for him. And so this story is about him coming to meet that truth. And how, when he encounters that, what does it make him feel? So that was Elephant in the Room, the story. That's really, really interesting. Um, uh, do, do, so uh, maybe we should now go to uh, your performance. And sure. uh, after that, we can uh, ask you about how, how the experience was performing in, in, at the French Festival and in, okay. in Zimbabwe. But first, let's see your performance. So okay. can, we, can we give the screen to Yuki now? Okay, I okay. <laughs> wow, I you I, I feel sad to be alone on the screen. It's like a co-actor has gone missing, Hurianti, and all of you know that Hurianti is uh, my uh, we're we're family and we're both performers. So this is great fun for us to do this. Um, Hurianti is a dancer; she's done theater, and so for us to jam like this is just super awesome. Okay, I'm going to um, um, I'm going to. Uh, do a part of the story, uh, and it comes pretty much closer towards the end of the story when I told you Ganpati is going to the forest to look for his head. And he arrives at a part of the forest where he thinks his head is. And there he meets the father of the head. So he meets the father elephant of his head. But this father elephant now has grown quite old and has He's had a bout of memory loss from the tragedy of losing his son. So he doesn't remember having a son. He doesn't remember, he doesn't recognize the head on top of Ganpati's shoulders as being his son. But all he knows is this old elephant is, he loves making sculptures and art. And the night before, he found a boy head made of clay and he made a sculpture out of it. But with the rain that fell that night, Ganpati's clay head dissolved and uh, became part of the earth. And when Ganpati sees that, that his head, his old boy head doesn't exist anymore, he's, he, he's very upset and he starts to cry and he starts to cry a lot because he, he made this journey into the forest to find his old head, but it's gone and he, he can't come to terms with it. And that's when this old elephant tries to, uh, tries to comfort Ganpati in this moment. The father of the elephant tries to comfort Ganpati. And I will be moving between two characters. That is the father of the elephant, who is called Words Weight, a take on Words Worth, because he's very poetic, Words Weight, and Ganpati. So I will tell you when I transition. And I have a little music for this, which is beautifully composed by Prutu Parab and Adriel George, who are rock star musicians. And let's play this. I'm going to take my head for a second. Bear with me for the technicals. And get the settings right. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't want to make it too loud. And let's give this a shot. Hope you can hear the music. You can just message on the chat if you can hear the music. So I know that you can hear it. I'm just checking that you can hear the sound, the music. OK, great. Good to know that the sound's fine. And I'm going to start it again and go for it. So it begins with the old elephant. That's a really nice trunk you have there. Even though you say 
You are not an elephant. You look a little bit like me. Oh, but only younger. And now I move into Ganpati. And Ganpati says, And as words went, looked at our reflection in the murky remains of what was my hair. He touched my face with his trunk and almost as if by instinct our trunks entwined. I felt a sense of familiarity as though I had known him all my life. He looked at the crease where this elephant head met my boy body, pained by the scars, as though they were his own. He looked at me, as I always hoped my father would. And as he walked away from me, that's when it hit me. Words wait. Was the father of this head? This head belonged to his son, Sati. And that's the encounter that Ganpati has with the father of the head that he has received. So I'll just pause the music there. And Hurianti, you can come back on. You know, Yuki, when I was uh, watching, uh, you had sent me the link to the play. I loved the bits with the spider. Yes. I you would do a little bit I of that. that. I can show you the voice of the spider. So in the story, yeah. um, uh, Ganpati is lamenting his head. And just then, at that moment, a spider creeps up on his shoulder and basically she tries to lure him into the forest. We realize much later that the spider is actually a woman who's been cursed into becoming a spider because she disobeys her family. So it's a really nice and she has a really fun voice. Um, so it opens with the story where Ganpati is lamenting. He said, you know, poor me, I have this head, I have this head, poor me, poor me, nobody understands. And she starts to speak and she says, oh, come on. There were worse things in the forest, you know. Um, the worst thing that had happened in the forest, you know. It's a pity no one else made a rhyme about it. Although I have to admit, I was just a little bit stirred. She looks up at him and she says, um, Funny face, trunk face. Do you think tadpoles make a soppy song every time they turn into fat little toad? <laughs> so she is like that. She's very naughty. She just says all the crazy things <laughs> that come to the top of her mind. And she has a partner who is the hunter called Murk. And Murk is one of my favorite characters in the play. And uh, they're actually a, a, a pair. They're a couple, but she was cursed to be a spider. And Murk is very funny. And they have put a trap on Ganpati. They put a spider's web and they trapped him. And he goes, we caught the freak, we caught the freak, a very large but very rare freak. Sir, I cannot tell your shape. Are you a circle or are you a square? Or one second, are you a circle on a square? <laughs> so he's like, that. he's fun, he's very charming. And uh, it's the two of them as a pair that take Ganpati all the way through the forest to look for his head. What fun. <laughs> Varun is saying my favorite was the hyena. <laughs> how, how many characters do you play? I played um, nine characters. Wow. Um, there's a hyena uh, who is contemplating leaving the forests of India to go to Africa for migration because the Indian forest where the human beings are ruining the forests. And so she thinks about migration. So that's a funny character. There's um, there's uh, a Siberian crane who's very sad that uh, uh, India is losing its wetlands. Again, water is scarce. So uh, they cannot come anymore in the winters to India. 
and there's a cheetah who's uh, now extinct actually in India. Um, and she foresees that this is going to happen. So the story of Elephant in the Room, of course, is a take on the myth, but also talks a lot about uh, environment, talks about um, a lot of cultural, social, cultural issues. Of course, my own uh, debates and, and uh, reflections on religion and how we choose to live. So it's a good, it's a really nice so, piece. It's so, written by Tina so, Sapru. So yeah, we, we uh, yeah. So the script was a collective effort so the script, so it's a story that I had been thinking and, and mulling on for a few years. Um, and then I met a fabulous writer called Sne Sapru. And uh, we wrote the script. She wrote the script. I came up with the story. It was a wonderful jam, a beautiful collaboration. And she wrote the play in verse, which means a lot of it is um, rhyming. Uh, there's a meter to it. And it was a very thought out collaboration. And I really enjoyed that collaboration with her. That's wonderful. So, uh, okay, so now um, we can take some questions if there are any. Yeah. And also, Yuki, can you tell, uh, I was going to ask you, how was, what was the, you know, uh, how, what was the experience like performing it at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival oh. and in Zimbabwe? That was uh, fabulous. I mean, Edinburgh is is a dream for so many artists to go and be able to perform every single night. In India, we don't do, we don't have runs of shows. You know, you do a few shows and then maybe two months later you do another show. But as an actor, to perform every single night for thirty nights is is a real treat. It's a good test of uh, your craft, of your skill to perform night after night. And of course, you're surrounded by so many shows, and the, the, it's a very vibrant atmosphere, which is so beautiful and and so wonderful. Uh, it's really celebrating um, the arts in such a fantastic way. And I was inside a, a shipping container, so they make performance spaces out of uh, so many things so i was in a shipping container and i was like this is so cool and a shipping container in the middle of the main road and there are bars and pubs and food so they really make it so great for the audience it's like a great audience experience so it's uh, wonderful of course our whole team got to go which is great we you know we we had a i mean a, a great time zimbabwe was again something so special because in my life i would never have thought that i'll get to zimbabwe and perform it was we were taken by teamworks and uh, of course, I want to quickly mention that Elephant in the Room was uh, commissioned by Prakriti Foundation uh, in India, Ranvi Shah, who, who, who supported us to make the show. And when we got to Zimbabwe, of course, the audience is so, you know, it was so beautiful to have such a mixed audience in Zimbabwe and meet people after the show. I mean, you know, where it's like crossing such continents and first time for me in Africa, first time. So it was beautiful to to be able to have a show. Lovely old theater. Uh, I had really good times there. Great. Yuki, I think you had some photos to show us. If you want to do that. Ah, uh, yeah, one. quickly. Let's show let's show yeah. the pictures. Um let's see, it's in a random order. Ran okay, so this is Karachi. Ah, yes, yes, yes. This is Karachi from Dying to Succeed. Of course, I've come off the stage to pull in a, an audience member. And this was very funny. This was so much fun, um, and and make them participate. I think I was playing a uh, Portia in there, like a funny version of Portia, and I rope in the audience. So that was Karachi Literature Fest. It was open air. It was beautiful. That evening was beautiful, and we can move to the next picture. Uh, oh, this is this is the elephant in the room in 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 the costumes made by Somaya Merchant. Um, actually, this costume won an award. She won best costume design at the Meta uh, Festival. And it's great because it's one costume, but I think the, the judges realized that it's very powerful. We, we use the cape in many ways. It comes off, it flies, we catch it. So it's a very be beautiful, it, the cape is a performer, I would say. And so Maya Merchant made this excellent uh, piece. And we can go to the next one. Um, Oh, this is a very memorable photograph. This is when we were researching for a, uh, a play that I made about a year and a half ago called Hello for Mayesh. And it's based, uh, the story is about girls in Haryana who dream about space because Kalpana Chawla was the first woman of Indian origin who went up to space. So we decided to make a story which uh, is about women dreaming about space. 
and of course it's women who take the radio station as a way to talk anonymously because in these villages you know there's a lot of gender issues women are, are not meant to leave the kitchens and the domestic chores but they uh, the fictional story is that they take over a radio station to talk about space but we actually went and did a lot of research in community radio stations of haryana which are doing fabulous work this is radio mewat this is the team from radio mewat and when the sarso ka fields in the region called mewat uh in haryana and that's sne sapru uh that's uh, the gang that's uh, uh such great memories and that's viraj singh at the back there who's the cinematographer who helped us document all the work and all the interviews we did with this team So yeah and we made a whole play based on this research called Hello Farmaish and uh, we can go to the next one Ah Farooq Merchant hi Sakina hello Varun hello Arjun everyone I'm just saying hi to all those who joined the chat this is the picture actually a still from Hello Farmaish and you'll see the costumes are definitely inspired by the earlier photograph that you saw um which is the women from Haryana and uh, your voice is breaking up again. oh 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 now is it better yeah okay so this is the photo of from the play hello farmaish and you'll see that we've got the costumes inspired from the earlier photograph from the women we met in haryana and this is a very beautiful piece on when they talk about how their voices are being silenced and they talk to the moon to to ask you know why do we need to be silenced and uh, it's a very beautiful piece so this is from hello farmaish and the next one um ah this is a a, a fun dance theater show uh, this is the first time i worked with dancers and all these dancers were acting for the first time a lot of them were acting for the first time some have before for many it was their first experience and this is a show about kids in school who face a lot of bullying and trauma and how they overcome their challenges and it's all through dance so it's really wonderful and then is there another picture there yes this is basti me masti Ah uh, this is superb this is uh, Basti Me Masti this is my co-actor Akshay Shimpi who is a really really superb funny generous actor he's I just called him and I said look aise show karte hai are you on he said of course and he comes and he's a complete complete mawali very talented mawali and you can see the kids they're really enjoying themselves we had people backstage in front of the stage on the side and on top looking from their balconies again open air one little gully and wow we had a great time doing this as well so this is basti me masti which is about two Sound. okay ah this I is think, i think we we having issues with the sound maybe uh oh oh let's Let see we're trying to get yuki back, back in there is some trouble in her connection there yuki you're back is this better can you hear me better now yeah now you're fine okay this is the edinburgh when we used to do our promotional activities on the road this is the gang that's adriel and prutu who are our composers and musicians and anjana was a friend who was visiting and helping us do promotional activities <laughs> so that's what the life in edinburgh can be like um you know my biggest part so we have a Yeah. My can you hear me? Oh, we can't. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. You can we have about 3 4 minutes left. Uh were there any questions? There were a lot of people who uh I think from Mumbai or from somewhere in India who have seen your play and who were commenting on it and and the, actually some people who'd seen you in Karachi and uh, yes. also who Chintan is there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any more questions from anyone anyone else any anything else you'd like to uh, tell us about yuki yeah i mean of course uh, the one person i always want to mention in all of this is uh, nilufa sagar who's actually my partner in dulse brothers to make sure every show happens she's a very quiet person she's the producer she's the boss making sure show after show that it happens i don't know if she's tuned in but that, that it's cool to have these partnerships i mean this is what the only way theater can happen is with so much collaboration and uh, it's just a zest right it's a big passion that everyone shares so we're able to only make it because of that 
Great, great. So it was it was really wonderful uh, having this session with you, Yuki. I wish we had more time. Maybe we can, you know, have a. I don't know if uh, I hope people noticed when Yuki did did that short piece uh, when she discovers that uh, you know uh, where the elephant head came from that she actually got tears in her eyes. That is a great actress. Ah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank you so much, Yuki. Thank you for being with us. We hope to see more of you, and we hope to see the elephant in the room someday in Karachi. Yes, and all over, and, and all the plays. We we'll come one by one. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rudianti, and thank you, Shaheen, for organizing this, and thank you, T2F, and Noni. Thank you. <laughs>